Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about 3D printers. What you see in front of you is a Bamboo Lab X1 carpet. And this thing is like the Ferrari 3D printers. It's over a thousand dollars. I won't get into particulars with price. It is expensive, but you definitely get what you pay for with this printer. Now, I want to set it straight right here, right now, early on in the video, that I personally am not a 3D printer snob. If you come to me and tell me that you have a Creality Ender 3 V1, cool, awesome. You can 3D print, you can make stuff in this hobby. It doesn't really matter what the model is. To me, if you have the capability of 3D printing in this hobby, you're, you're doing something great. I personally started with an Ender 3. I'd say I had it six months, maybe six to nine months. And I sold it to a buddy so I could get a bigger 3D printer, which was an Artillery Sidewinder X1. And I got a bigger printer because I wanted to print bodies. And I think I only printed bodies like twice. But it was a great printer. It really was. Before this came out, the Artillery Sidewinder was a really good printer. But towards the end, it got really finicky with me. I just saw this on the floor next to my bench. This was something I printed on my Sidewinder. I went in CAD and made a parts tray. God, I'm so waking up this morning. I went on Fusion, designed me a, a parts tray with magnets on the back. And the Sidewinder X1 had a big enough bed where I could print this all at once. I actually keep this in my backpack for trail repairs. If anyone ever breaks down, I bust this out, set it next to them, and it's actually helped a lot of people not lose screws, replacing their kingpin screw or taking apart and repairing an axle or something. It's, it's, it's helpful. If you'd like me to revisit this design, let me know in the comments, because only reason I haven't revisited this is a lot of plastic. <laughs> this thing is huge. But getting back to the printer itself, we get back around to this Bamboo Labs. It took my third printer to finally teach me about 3D printing to fully understand it. Because this machine helped teach me the mistakes that I was doing on my previous printers and why they were turning out so bad. And the first thing I was doing wrong is not taking care of my filament. The, my filament of choice is PETG. And the reason I pick PETG is you can pick PLA, but if you leave it on your bench next to the window and the sun comes through that window, it's going to melt that PLA print. So I went with PETG because when I looked it up, it was just as easy as PLA, but could withstand outdoor conditions. Also, supposedly it's just a teeny tiny bit tougher than PLA. I'm going to try to transition away from PETG because it's a pain in the butt. But with PETG, it is extremely hydroscopic, I think is the word for it. It absorbs a lot of moisture out of the atmosphere. And that was a huge issue with my 3D printers. I would never keep my PETG dry enough. With this Bamboo Lab X1, it has a ton of compensation that it can do for a bunch of different parameters. And also, since this is an enclosure, 
that gets heated up by the bed and the chamber heater, you can dry the filament in here before you use it. Another thing that people struggle with starting out is bed leveling. And essentially with bed leveling, you're going to look like an idiot with a little piece of paper underneath the hot end and like wiggling it while adjusting screws on the bottom of the bed. I honestly liked bed leveling because you could see the results when you get your bed dialed. And as printers progressed, you had to do it less and less. It was like a once a month thing you could check of, okay, I still got my bed level. It's still nice and happy with all the settings. But with this, it does it automatically every print. So it, it is a option you can toggle because the sequence that it does to level the bed takes maybe another minute and a half. So if you're really pressed for time on a prototype part, you can turn that off. But the little dance that it does for calibration and bed leveling and all that stuff doesn't bother me. It just makes the prints come out better, in my opinion. But getting to why I'm making this video is it's not, it's not all rainbows and hearts. Okay, this is what's called the hot end for the Bamboo Labs X1. And see, I use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And what happens to cause this is it purges filament before every run. And to get that purge off of the nozzle, it has a I guess wiper in the back corner and the hot end swipes on that wiper to get the purgeable filament off and over time it just snaps. Not that that's a bad thing. Supposedly in the forums hot ends are consumable items. That's the second one I've replaced about to put in my third one. But I'm not too bothered by it, I'm not too upset, because the hot ends are like 30 bucks. And also, Bamboo Labs is a really cute company, because with your orders, you can get sent models and add-ons for your 3D prints, and I got a 3D a outboard motor for a 3D printed Benchy. I'm super stoked about that. I've, I've seen these on Facebook and I wanted the outboard motor so bad. I'm so happy that I got it in my order. We're going to get this hot end replaced and fire it up and I may get some B-roll footage going of it doing its calibration thing. And maybe a little bit of printing. Okay, real quick. I ordered the complete hot end assembly because if you have just a regular hot end, what you will need to do, which honestly I've done once before, it's not terribly hard. This is just laziness and convenience. You can take the silicone sock off. You can take the silicone sock off and right here is like a heater pad. And then there's a metal clip that slides over it to keep that heater pad in place. But if you buy it pre-assembled like this, all of that is done for you. So all I have to do is plug these three wires in and screw this into place. And it also comes with new screws. There we 
there's your home screen. I am connected to Wi-Fi. There's your hot end temperature, your bed temperature, and your enclosure temperature. We can go here to files. That was the last thing I was trying to print, which is a little rock feature for my aquarium. I like turning time lapse off because that all that does is just take pictures at the end of every layer and saves it to an SD card. But I turn that off because this is only like two gigs or some stuff and I don't want to clog it up. I don't know if you can see that back there, but it's purging the filament right now. And there it goes, got the little shoot in the back. And now it will do a bunch of vibration and hot end calibration, then it'll do bed leveling, and then it'll do filament calibration, and then it'll start printing. I'll come back when it starts printing.